We do have a blood drive on Tuesday, December 12th. It'll be here from 2 to 7 p.m. If any of you are brave souls who would please sign up, um, because it is for a good cause to help others who um, would be in need of a blood donation. Um, also, we have a potluck today. If you would love to stay and fellowship with us, we would love to have you. We have um, very yummy haystacks, which are my favorite, especially with all the chilies that get prepared for us. So please stay um, and join us for fellowship. And then the last one is we will be having our lessons and carols um, program on December 16th. It's a wonderful program that we put together every year, and we would be very happy to have you all here. Okay? So I think with that, I will leave you. <laughs>
So we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for a bright summer like this. We thank you so much for taking us to the world, but you have brought us here once again. Glory and honor be to your name. Today we pray that everything that is going to go on here come and be in our midst. Every blessing that you are sharing for your children may not bypass it, but give us a portion of it. This is what we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, Bucks County, and happy Sabbath. We are thrilled to be here with you uh, this morning on this foggy, <laughs> kind of rainy morning. Um, but I always say Sabbath should be the best day of the week. And uh, whatever is doing outside, we're here to praise the Lord together. Uh, my name is Eric Engen. My 22nd year at Blue Mountain Academy, believe it or not. I can't believe I'm standing here and saying that. But over the years, we've uh, visited Bucks County with the uh, Lawson Handbell Ensemble, the uh, bell choir. And I love coming here because we have space to spread out. <laughs> and a good thing because uh, just about a month ago, we added this special addition on the bass, these uh, big aluminum uh, bass bells. Those notes are as low as the note goes on the piano almost. That C, uh, C2, ring the C2 once there, Edson. wait for it. It just kind of builds and grows and then travels to the back. Uh, those are on loan to us. Uh, we borrow them for, for the next year. Um, and these bells are made right here in your neighborhood. I don't know if you knew that. Yeah, right down the corner here in uh, Plumsteadville. And I say that to people, they don't know where that is. So I say near Doylestown. So, <laughs> but you guys, you guys do. Yeah, the Walmart uh, handbell company. And if I say that too quickly, people think I said Walmart. No. <laughs> It's Mall Mark, and um, I, did a, I was visiting the factory one time, and there was a gentleman there who was an Adventist, and I don't think he goes to this church, but um, you know, he, he told me he was an Adventist. He asked Blue Mountain Academy, isn't that the Adventist? I said, yep. He said, I'm an Adventist, and I go to church here somewhere. So we have Adventist craftsmen uh, helping to, to uh, make these beautiful instruments. <clears throat> um, so we're going to play some songs in and around the service. We're blessed to be able to, uh, to share our ministry um, uh, with the pastor who will be speaking later today. And come to find out we have some things in common uh, from, from the church where he is. We visited his church in the past. And uh, one of his church members is a former uh, Lawsonette Ensemble ringer, Matthew Guy, if somebody knows who those people are. Do you, did you know Matthew, Bianca? All right, must have been after your time. So you're, you're not... <coughs> Neither am I. <laughs> I was going to say as young as I used to be. But anyway, um, guys, Bianca Barbosa in the back wave at us. She's one of our famous Lawsonette members. Good to see you here. And um, anyway, so we're going to be playing. The, the first song we played was an anthem on Abersworth. It's a kind of an English mm, song. And if you maybe recognize the tune, um, it's, it's escaping me now. Uh, the name of the, the hymn that goes along with it. Da, 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 um, let me to thy bosom rest. Jesus, lover of my soul, I think it was. Yeah, okay, there we go. Anyway, uh, we are going to play um, some songs that have something to do with Christmas in a minute. Um, the, the next song we're going to play is called Shades of Forest Green. And this one... I kind of have this vision in my mind of the camel journey to um, visit baby Jesus in the manger. See if you agree as, as we play this. The Forest Green is another hymn tune that, is, um, that is, is, this is based on.
Happy Sabbath, everyone. I don't know about you, but this week was super rough. Um, I don't know what's going on in your life. All I know is what I'm trying to manage, and it left me in tears every single day of the week. Now, I don't want you to feel bad for me, so put a smile on your face, because I have a smile on my face. Um, I share that because uh, yesterday I was in class and a few of us graduate students were just venting about how horrible our lives are. And one of them turned to me and said, Jalissa, I don't even know how you're doing it because you have like three jobs. And they said it out loud and it hit me and then the tears came again and I was like, oh my goodness, it's so true, I do. I don't know how to manage my life. Uh, managing my personal life feels like the fourth job, and that is really, really hard to do. But I was talking to someone, and they said to me, whenever your life feels imbalanced or you feel like, you know, things are spinning around, everything is chaotic, that is a sign that God is not in control and that you are trying to control things. You are trying to be Lord of your life and asking God to be your servant. And that hit deeply because I am a control freak. I love to be in control, and when things are out of control, um, I'll put a smile on my face and act like they're in control. <laughs> um, but anyway, I share that with you because today I've been thinking about my week and the fact that I'm able to smile, and sometimes I wonder, like, am I, am I crazy? Because there's no way I could be going through all this and then smile in front of people. But I really do believe that there is something called joy that only comes from God. It doesn't matter what you're going through. The devil cannot steal it. Nobody can take it away from you. Um, and that only manifests in your life when you are seeking after him. And so that's what we're going to do in this very moment. Um, I want to give you an opportunity. You don't have to participate. It's okay. But if anyone knows about like the popcorn method, I want you to tell me whether it's one word or a phrase of what it is that you would like me to pray for. So if that's family, um, insecurities, grades, whatever it is that you would like me to pray for, I am encouraging you to actually say it out loud. Like I said, you do not have to do that, okay? Um, I will give you about 10 seconds and then we will begin praying. You don't have to raise your hand, just say it out loud. Ready? All right, we're going to pray. Thank you so much. Bow your heads and close your eyes, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your Sabbath day. I want to personally thank you for just thinking in advance that we would need a day of rest and control freaks like me can work 24 seven. And so you have given us this day to come near to you and to reflect on what has gone on um, throughout the week and use that as a way of um, being able to give you thanks for what you've done for us in the past and thanks for what you're going to do for us in the future. We thank you for being a personal God who is attentive to every single detail in our lives. We thank you for being a God who keeps us safe and who listens to us when we pray. We thank you for being a God who is able to comfort us through various means, whether it's people, sometimes food. We thank you for just being a great God to us who only gives good gifts to his children. We ask that you be with our students, people who are looking into colleges, um, those who are looking into going into high school. We ask that you be with um, families. Um, and all the other prayer requests that were said, be with the unspoken ones as well. We know that you can take our groans and moans and turn them into a sweet smelling incense and you can actually interpret those prayers and so we ask that you do that for us right now. Please be with all the different um, prayer requests that we talked about earlier this morning. 
And um, I want to thank you in advance for what you are going to do for us when we decide to make you Lord of our lives. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. Good morning, Happy Sabbath Church. My name is Raphael, and uh, a couple weeks ago, I was talking with my nephew, and we we're talking about Bible stuff. And he said, he calls me Junior. He said, Junior, there's one verse in the Bible I'll never, ever forget. So I'm like, what is it, John 3, 16? He said, no. I said, what is it, Philippians 4, 13? He said, no. Then he told me with conviction that there is one verse in his church that they'll never, ever forget to read week after week. And now I'm like, I'm curious. I'm like, what is it? He said, Junior, I'm sick and tired of Malachi 3.10. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. We guys, we've heard it a hundred times. So today what I want to do is I want to switch it up. I'm going to ask my two helpers to come up here. And I need one more helper. Uh, I don't know if we have any little ones in here. Do we have any? No problem. Uh, Carolina. Is Carolina in here? I'll, I'll get her out here. Okay, Ariel, let me get you up here. Thank you. Okay, thank you guys so much for helping me. Uh, since you decided to come help me, I have some gifts for you guys, okay? All right. Amelia, since you were really nice to me in Sabbath school today, I will bless you with many gifts, okay? <laughs> and it comes with an advance with the uh, paid vacation days. Um, Ariel, since you were so nice to come up here, I will bless you with five coins. Mm. <laughs> and, uh, and Emma, since you uh, told me that I smell bad and I'm not funny, you only get one coin. Okay? So you guys enjoy that, okay? You guys enjoy that. Um, in the book of Mark, chapter 12, verse 41, we read of a faithful widow. It says, now Jesus sat opposite the treasury and saw how the people put money into the treasury. <laughs> and many who were rich put in much. Then one poor widow and came in and threw in two mites, which makes a quadrant. That's equal to one eighth of a cent. Guys, inflation's real. So he called his disciples to himself and said to him, Assuredly, I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all those who have given to the treasury. Jesus, what are you talking about? This lady couldn't put in two, she couldn't rub two pennies together. How possibly could she put in more than all the rich men there? <laughs> for they out of her poverty, so, sorry, for they out of their abundance, Sorry, for they all put in out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty, she out of her despair, she out of her loneliness and hopelessness, put in all that she had, <laughs> her whole livelihood. Um, so what this verse is telling, oh, guys, guys, I think I made a mistake. Guys, I was planning to go to Starbucks later after sunset. <laughs> but guys, I gave you guys all the money that I had. Um, your majesty, since I uh, gave you all that you had. Do you think you can spare me just a tenth? Just a tenth of what you have? No, I don't have it. What do, what do, you, what do, you, what do, you, what do you mean? It's not for you. <laughs> okay. Um, Ariel, yeah. listen, I know I didn't give you much, okay? I know I didn't give you much, but, but listen, they have these new peppermint mocha frappuccinos at, at Starbucks. Do you think you could give me just, just something what you have? This is not going to be enough. A dollar twenty-five at Starbucks? That's not getting you anywhere. You don't think so? No. Okay. <laughs> Emma, 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 listen to me. I know we got up to a bad start, 
Okay, I know you only have one coin, but listen to this. If you trust me, just put a little faith in me. I promise you that you'll be blessed beyond this coin. Do you trust me? Mm. Just, just, just a little bit. Fine. Okay. Thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, I promise you guys I'm almost done. In the book of Matthew, chapter 25, uh, Jesus talks about the parable of the talents, where it's similar to this. Uh, there was a master who gave his three servants different levels of money. And uh, they all did different things with their money, and they came back uh, to report what they had done with it. And there were two faithful servants and one unfaithful servant. Unfortunately for us, we have two unfaithful servants. Uh, but the master said to the unfaithful servant, for to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. But the master said to his faithful servant, the master said to Emma, says, his Lord said to him, I love when the Lord says, his Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant, Emma. You were faithful over a few things. No. <laughs> so I'll make you a ruler over many things, amen? Listen, guys, we should never give expecting something in return. But the same one who's asking is the same one who's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ever think to ask him for. So let's meditate on that this morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we're thankful that you've blessed us with the means of being here this morning. We're thankful that we are able to give back to you the one who's given us all. We know that without you, nothing is possible. And we ask that our faith in giving reflects that. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys for helping. Thank you. 
says it's now time for the children's story and the children's offering. Am I right? I think I'm correct. So if all the boys and girls who are the right age would help us out, there's some baskets at the back for you to come pick up a children's offering. And there's something special that La Sonnette Ensemble is going to do with you. So I'm, I'm hoping especially a little Montalvo baby will be part of this part of this thing so children if you would walk down the aisles and uh, collect some money the people will hold out for you and uh, then when you're done Lorianne has a special story she's going to share with you and then we're going to do something special with you with the bells Anybody? Is anybody still have? Oh, there's one over there. I need some help. Oh, um, we got someone here too. anybody okay happy Sabbath boys and girls I am so excited to see you are you happy that it's the Sabbath that you get to rest from going to school and everything yeah I'm glad when it's happening I'm especially glad because I have a special story to share with you and then we have a special activity plan would anyone like to pray for us to start name. Noah's going to pray for us. Here you go, Noah. Thank you for this day, and I want to have a great day with my family and in this church, and for everybody to hear to have a great, great day at Sabbath School and Church. Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Noah. Has anyone ever been amongst a big crowd before? A big crowd, lots of people. You have? How many people were there? Do you know? No? Can you estimate? Maybe 100 people? Maybe? Yeah? 
I've been in a big crowd before, about 700 people, there are a lot of people. Today our story takes place in the book of Matthew. You can also find it in the book of John. Jesus was preaching to 5,000 people. That's a lot of people. And they were there for a long time listening to Jesus speak. Have you ever been so caught up doing your favorite thing that you just don't want to stop? Like maybe playing your favorite game, soccer, basketball, your favorite board game? Yeah, you might not want to stop because you enjoy it, right? Yeah, so the people really enjoyed listening to Jesus speak, and they didn't go home. And the disciples came up to Jesus. Jesus, it's late. You should tell the people to go home and get something to eat. They're all hungry. And Jesus said, well, why don't you find something to feed the people? Find something to feed 5,000 people? Jesus, we barely have anything to feed ourselves. 5,000 people? And Jesus said, yeah. So there was this little boy who had a lunch of five loaves of bread, and two little fish and he gave it up and he gave it to the disciples he's like this is all i have and the disciples looked at the the little food that he had and they said thank you and took the food and gave it to jesus jesus this is all we have for five thousand people and jesus like okay and then prayed over it and said go share it go share five loaves of bread and two fish to five thousand people jesus Jesus just like yeah go share the food Yeah, then the rest of the people won't have anything to eat. Or so the disciples thought. But after Jesus had prayed, the food was multiplied. As he gave it to people, more and more people got some to eat. And the Bible even says they got more. They got according to how many they wanted. So they they were able to go for seconds and thirds, you know, like during Thanksgiving dinner, and just keep going and going. That's how it was. And they had more leftovers than anyone's Thanksgiving dinner, probably. They have 12 whole baskets of leftovers. Wow. I would have liked to be there when Jesus performed that big miracle, wouldn't you? But do you know that Jesus can still perform these big miracles in our lives today when we give him the little that we have? Like our time, when we spend time reading and praying, or like our talents. How many of you here are good at singing? Hmm, No one's good at singing? Who's good at drawing? Ooh, okay, who's good at playing a sport who's good at helping others who's good at smiling yeah (laughs) all right so when we have these little things and we give it up for Jesus he can multiply it and use it as a blessing for not just ourselves but for all those around us it's kind of like my bell choir that I have here do you think that if I didn't play my part and no one else played their part that we'd be able to make this beautiful music Everyone has to give the little that they have, and together God blesses it and turns it into something beautiful. So boys and girls, I encourage you to give what little you have. It might just be a smile or just be a prayer, but Jesus wants you to give him every little thing that you have, okay? So we're going to do something to illustrate that point today. So, boys and girls, stand up and look behind you. There are some people there. They're going to come find you and pick you, and they're going to ask you to come and join them. So, Lawsonette, everybody's going to everybody's going to have a partner, and they're going to give you one little bell to play. It's really easy and it's fun, and we'll help you. So, and awesome. All right, we need, we, does anybody still need a partner? We have this, this little girl right here, okay. All right, take them over with you to where we're going to stand. So come over with them, and we're going to show you. If you have one little talent, maybe you can sing just a little bit, or maybe you have just a little bit of money, or maybe you have just a, you know, a little bit of a smile. You give that to Jesus, he will bless it and multiply it. So here we're going to show that with the one little chime you have, the one little bell you have. All right, are we ready to go? <laughs> okay. So, so will you take your hitchhawk. Will you go stand with him at least? Okay, you're going to stand with me? You want to stand with me? No, she doesn't want to stand with me either. All right, um, groups. Can you kind of space yourselves out so I know? So where's my A group? 
Are you an A group? Lorianne, are you an A group? All right, so where's my G group? Scooch over just a little bit. So where's my E group? E group, move over a little bit, move over a little more in the corner. I need a gap between the groups. Oh my, is this the D group? Whoa. All right, and then the C group. All right, we're gonna practice. I'm gonna point to your group, and you ring your chime. Are you watching me? So you gotta watch, ready? Go. Good. Watch. Okay. Watch again. Okay, so that's how quickly I'm going to point and you got to watch. All right, here we go. Together, go. Yeah, there you go. Nicely done. Well, thank you so much for helping us with that point. If you could give the chime back to the people that you got it from. And uh, when you go back to your seats, just remember, if you have a little thing you can do, share it with Jesus and, and he'll bless it. Thank you, guys. So we're going to play two songs together for the special music time, and uh, then we'll be blessed with the sermon, and we're going to play one at the close of the, of the service. Uh, the first one is another hymn tune based on, I guess you guys know that in our hymnal, we have all the songs there, but they're listed by the words. But the tune itself has a name as well. That's what that Abersworth was. And this next one is, is based on the hymn tune called Pleading Savior. I'm not sure it's in our Adventist hymnal, but it's, it's in other ones. Um, and this is going to be treated sort of in the Celtic uh, flavor and, and uh, style. Um, so it's called the, the Celtic Dance on Pleading Savior.
And the last song in our little set here is uh, one that's always associated with bells and Christmas. And you can probably guess what it would be. Yes, the Carol of the Bells. Um, you remember, bells in churches used to be just a single bell that would be up in the tower. And as the church grew in size and, and uh, prosperity, and they, their membership and their giving came, they would add two or three bells together. And sometimes they would have, you know, seven or eight bells up there. And they figured when they had that many bells, maybe we should use those to play songs. And um, the bells have always been something that calls people to come to church, whether it's to come to the service, come to a special function. There could be an inauguration. There could be a funeral. Um, come to worship. Whatever it is, when you hear the sound of the bells, it's really a call to come together and worship. And so... Once they got those bells together in so many, uh, such a big quantity, they said they could, they could play songs, but they needed a thing to practice with. So they didn't want to practice with the whole tower bells. They, the whole valley and community would hear them. So that's handbells were invented. They would practice with these in the basement, and when they got good enough with those, they would go up to the tower and pull the ropes and ring the bells in those same sequences. So um, that's kind of the background of handbells and uh, how they're associated with churches um, through all, you know, all times, really. Um, and so this is the setting of the Carol of the Bells that we all know and love and probably have already started hearing it in the shopping centers and things, um, probably since Halloween. But it's, it's a beautiful song and we love to play it. So um, here it is, Carol of the Bells. speaker our speaker for today has chosen Jeremiah 29 verses 8 to 14 to support his sermon I will read 
And you can follow on screen, in the Bible, whatever you so desire. Jeremiah 29, 8 to 14. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners that are in the midst of you deceive you, neither hearken to your dreams which you cause to be dreamed. For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, says the Lord. For thus says the Lord, that after 70 years are accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you. This is the word of the Lord from the prophet Jeremiah. Have you enjoyed the presentation so far? Amen. It's been a blessing, isn't it? Thank God for. And that was just the appetizer. Now comes the main course. I have the privilege of introducing our speaker today. It's his first visit here, and I'm sure he received a very warm welcome. His name, he said I did, thank you. His name is John Hakizamana. A very interesting last name, I would say, but we'll just refer him to Elder John today. Elder John has been a teacher at Lake Nelson Adventist Academy for the last 16 years. And as with any God-inspired adventure, John says, teaching came, found me. Or came to me. Beside being on the faculty at Lake Nelson, teaching is really the core of John's being and ministry. Teaching is what I love to do most, he says. It's top of the list in his spiritual gifts package. And what brings him absolutely the most joy. He's also an advocate for children and youth. In fact, he gives them voice when they cannot speak for themselves and also gives them an opportunity to advocate for themselves when they can. He's currently serving as an elder of his church and he also leads the youth department at his church as well as advisor to the Adventurers Club. 
And by the way, John, we have an adventurous club here. So, uh, Jalissa, you know who to contact for as support for your club. Today, we look forward to and experiencing a teaching moment when, from this pulpit, Elder John will share with us a message that God has given him to deliver to us. Welcome, Elder John. I did not know that I was going to receive such a beautiful treat. Are we okay? I always enjoy whenever I get to hear Lassonet. And uh, as uh, you said, one of my former students was a member a while back. And, um, now he has graduated, he's actually become, so you know, the, the student has become the teacher. I'm relearning calculus, and he's helping me to learn calculus. So one of these days, you're going to get a chance to come back and teach your teachers. And um, as I said, as they said, I'm, I'm a teacher, that's, that's, that's what I do, it's what I, uh, I feel like I've been called to do. Uh, whenever I'm standing up in front of people, I feel like I'm at home. For some of you, this is a very scary spot. Uh, but there are some things that you do that I find very scary. For example, I cannot play bells. <laughs> uh, and also, I don't find the courage to go door to door knocking and, uh, you know, e either giving out books or telling people about the, the love of Jesus Christ. I find that to be very scary, but some of you do it very well. Each of us has been created with a specific talent. That you say, if you have a small something, you could give it to the Lord and it's going to become great. So, uh, is my mic okay? Or do, do we just keep doing prelimin preliminaries? Okay, good. All right, uh, let us pray and let's get into the word. Amen. Father God, thank you for your blessing. Thank you for this Sabbath day. Thank you for allowing us to be together here. I pray that you would anoint my lips, my mind, my heart with your Holy Spirit. With you would anoint your people with the Holy Spirit that we may receive your message today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, I'm going to start with this illustration to show you how easily your mind can be fooled and also how easily you could change your mind. Uh, so let's just do a slow... Can you see the motion? All right. Uh, what kind of motion are you perceiving? Huh? Rotation. Okay, so you're perceiving the rotation. Okay. Uh, anybody able to just see it in 2D, two dimension? Just uh, up and down? Okay, just two, two dimensional? Can you see the, the, the three dimensional one? Okay, good. Now I'm going to tell you the truth, the reality of what I set. And then we're going to change that truth. I made this thing to tumble forward. It's tumbling forward. It's rotating towards you. Now I want you to look at it and in your mind switch it to tumble backwards. How many of you have got it already? Can you make it tumble backwards? Okay, good. Can you switch it back once you've got it backwards? Switch it back to the forward. I didn't change anything. You just change it in your mind. Can you go back and forth, back and forth? There, it does hurt a little bit, but once uh, you do it for a while, you go like, wow, that's, that's a fun game, correct? <laughs> the reality is it's tumbling towards you. It's tumbling forward, but you can make it tumble backwards. In other words, there are some things 
that your brain can perceive different from what the reality is and you can choose whether you're going to see them forward or backwards. You can choose how you perceive the reality of what is happening, whether you're going to see it as is or you're going to see it in a different direction. And it happens just like that. Which means you can change your mind about everything. Did you know that? All right, let's stop this one. Let's go to this one. And I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm, tum I'm, I'm, I'm twisting it this way. Okay, this is the reality of it. It's going this way. Okay, can you take it backwards? It's a little harder when it's standing, but you could do it. If I increase the speed, would that help you a little bit? Have you succeeded at changing your mind yet? Because I'm going to do the other one now. Huh? How many of you have, able to, uh, have been able to go back and forth? Okay. Uh, those of you who want to know, this is on the internet. It's, it's a, uh, a website called Desmos. Um, hey, hey, don't shake your head, don't shake your head. Yeah. Desmos, it's a math uh, graphing calculator. You could do it uh, 3D or 2D, they have a two-dimensional one. Okay, let's do this one now. This one is interesting. Oh, it's too fast, too fast, too fast. Oh, it's tumbling towards you. Okay, now can you make it go backwards? <laughs> you can change your mind very easily. In fact, it's a matter of seconds. No matter what life is throwing at you, you could always change your mind. You could look at it forward, you could look at it backwards. Now, it's not just that I, I chose a spiral on per, I mean, uh, without a purpose. Uh, you, you heard that I'm a teacher, right? Teachers always do everything on purpose. What does that look like? DNA. This is the signature of God. Not only is it the signature of God in your body of what makes you, it is also the path that our earth takes in space. If you look at the sun, the sun is not stationary. The sun does move through space. And the earth is going around it, but if something is moving through space and the earth is going around it, it's actually spiraling forward through space. But not just the earth spiraling through space. The sun is also spiraling through space. Oh, have you ever planted beans or something like that that grows and has those little things that, 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 that go around? What shape do they take? Spirals. Now, when I used to have hair, <laughs> my hair was very coily. I think you would put it in the 4C or something like that. And it was spirally. It's the signature of God. In you, outside of you, to the macros uh, macroscopic level, to the microscopic level, everything is spiral. Your proteins that make who you are. Not only, it's not just the DNA, the proteins also have these uh, structures that we call uh, alpha helixes or alpha helices that are, uh, that are spiraling just like that. It is the signature of God. And so, 
We have reality, and we have what we perceive. And you could always switch the reality of what you perceive. So we're going to put this to the side. I wanted to illustrate to you that you can change your mind. Okay, we're just fixing that. Thank you very much. Okay, we could go off screen now. We don't need that anymore. Now you know now you, know you could change your mind, correct? Yes. Excellent. So now today we're going to talk about time out. In Jeremiah chapter 29, I was, as was read... There's a situation that's happening. We have the children of Israel have been taken into captivity in Babylon. Now, if you're a good Adventist, you know the story of Daniel. You know the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Those were not their actual names. Their names were Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. You should know their names as they are. The world will try to give you its name. But you need to go back to your name, to the reality. If it's tumbling forward, tumble forward with it. Don't, don't make it look backwards. If it's going side this way, you don't go this way. Even though you can, but I want you to stick with the reality. So um, they get taken into captivity. Daniel and them were probably your age. And they were the children of nobility. But they were not the only ones who were taken into captivity. Thousands of people were taken. And in, in, in those thousands of people, when it came time to see or to show who they worship, only three stood up. And Daniel wasn't at the plain of Dura. If he had been there, four would have st uh, stood up. Sometimes it's going to require for you to stick to the reality of God against all odds so that you can show that you belong to God and in these times when everything is forward backwards sideways and all that stuff these times is when you need to know what the true reality is so when I started with the exercise I would tell you this is what I said now you could choose to look at it backwards or you could choose to look at it forward but this is what I said God takes the Bible and tells us this is what I set and then there's gonna be some false prophets so he took these people into captivity in Babylon and then there is these false prophets if you go to uh, chapter 28 chapter 28 is not too long which means I'm gonna read the whole thing but I need to to read it for you for emphasis it says, and it happened in the same year at the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the fourth year, in the fifth month, that Hananiah, the son of Azur, the prophet, who was from Gibeon, spoke to me. This is Jeremiah speaking. We're reading from the book of Jeremiah. So when he says, spoke to me, we know he's speaking to Jeremiah. Spoke to me in the house of the Lord and in the presence of the priests and of all the people, saying, well, wait, hold on. He spoke to him where? In the, in the house of the Lord. This is a false prophet where? In the church. You don't have to go very far to find false prophets. They are right here. And the Bible says to the law and to the testimony. If they do not speak according to this word. It is because there is no light in them. Do not believe them. To the law and to the testimony, they have to, to speak according to this word. So Hananiah says, thus speaks the Lord of hosts. The God of Israel saying, I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon. What? God had called Nebuchadnezzar before he was born and says, I'm going to set you as a king and I'm going to make sure that you could conquer all of these places. Now Hananiah is coming and says, I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon. How? God didn't say that. Within two full years, I will bring you back. I will bring back to this place all the vessels of the Lord house of the Lord's house that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, took away from this place and carried to Babylon. 
And I will bring back to uh, this place, Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and all the captives of Judah who went to Babylon, says the Lord, for I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. That was a false prophet speaking. How do we know that? You don't have to take my word. Later we find out he is a false prophet. Then the prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and in the presence of all the people who stood in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. The Lord do so. The Lord perform your works which you have prophesied to bring back the vessels of the Lord's house and those who were carried away captive from Babylon to this place. Nevertheless, hear now this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of your people. The prophets who have come before me and before you of old prophesied against many countries and great kingdoms of war, of disaster, and pestilence. And as for the prophet and prophesi uh, who prophesies of peace, and the word of the prophet comes to pass, that's the key, comes to pass, that prophet will be known as one who's, whom the Lord has truly sent. Then Hananiah the prophet took the yoke off the prophet Jeremiah's neck and broke it. And Hananiah broke into the presence of the people, say, Thus says the Lord, even so I will break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, from the neck of all the nations. Hmm. Within a space of two full years. Remember, maybe I'll get myself back in trouble. But I love trouble. Remember when we had a timeout called the pandemic? Remember when there's some people that were talking about it was going to be gone in two months. It's going to be gone in less than a year. It's going to be gone, completely gone. And after we lost millions and millions of people, people were still saying it's going to be gone. So here you have people that were taken captivity from Judah to Babylon. And now you have some prophets because they want the people to not stress. Sometimes we are so afraid of telling the people the truth that we tell them things that are going to be pleasant to them so that they don't get stressed. Now, as a teacher, I do not believe in coddling children. I do not believe in telling them, oh, you're going to pass my class and they have an F that is so deeply low that, that is not going to be able to, 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 to be done. I'm sorry. I have to tell you the truth. Because if it comes time, the math does not lie, people. The ma I'm a math teacher, and the reason why I'm a math teacher is because math is just consistent. And when God was writing you, as we saw, those were sine and cosine functions. Ma math does not lie. When God was writing you, when God was writing the universe, he wrote it mathematically. And so if, if, if you're a student and at the, first, at the end of the first quarter, you've got a 28%. And you're not performing to the level that you're going to get a full 100 in the second quarter, then you're not going to pass this semester. And me telling you that you're going to pass is only di doing you a disservice. I cannot do that to you. I cannot be telling you, oh, you know what? This is going to pass in two years. Hananiah was saying, oh, we're going to be, you guys are going to be out of captivity in two years. God is going to break the yoke of Babylon and it's going to be done. You're going to be back. No time. No. No, no, no. So this is what happens. Verse 12. Now the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah after Hananiah had spoken to the people, had broken the yoke of the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Go and tell Hananiah, saying, Thus says the Lord, You have broken the yokes of wood, <laughs> but you have made in their place yokes of iron. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, 
I have put a yoke of iron on the neck of all these nations that they may serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they shall serve him. I have given him the beasts of the field also. Now sometimes you're wondering, why would a loving God, why would a loving God choose to use a pagan king to put a yoke on his people? Sometimes because of our choices or sometimes because of the choices of our forefathers, our grandparents, we may find ourselves in situations of being in captivity. And God chooses to use what the devil had intended for evil to teach us some valuable lessons. So yes, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah were in Babylon. It was not their fault. If you want to trace it back, you could trace it back all the way to Hezekiah, who when they came to visit him after he had been healed, instead of showing them the, the Jesus in the house of the Lord, he showed them the treasures in his house. And so they were making inventory. Oh, this little tiny nation that has zero army has all of this gold? This little tiny nation that cannot fight anybody has all of this silver and chariots and all of that stuff? They were making an inventory. And they made an inventory. It's like if somebody, if, 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 you, if you gave somebody your phone, and, you know, uh, not only did you give them your phone, but you gave them access to your phone. That means you put in their face to be able to open your phone, right? And you, you, you also have set, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 your face to open your bank accounts. And now they could open your bank accounts and go, oh, you got this much in your account? Okay, oh, you got that much? Okay, oh, you got this much too? Oh, this is where your savings are. So they made a plan. Hey, they went, they went to report. They went back to report to their masters. This was way before King Nebuchadnezzar. They said, there's a tiny nation out there. They don't have a big army. They do win wars. We don't know how. They win wars. We don't know how they win wars, but you know, guess what? Uh, they're so small. Their people are just regular people, and they have all of this gold. Not only do they have all of this gold, their entire church is painted in gold. The, you enter the, the, ta the tabernacle, and it's just gold. And so the Babylonians started making a plan. So sometimes you will find yourself in situations because your grandparents, your great-grandparents did something stupid, and now you are having to pay for it. And then somebody's going to come and tell you, oh, no, no, you can get out of it very quickly. You know, remember that student with the 28? You can cheat your way to an A. Or if you tell the teacher, well, teacher, can you give me extra credit? I said, There's only so much extra credit that could... Uh. But Jeremiah continues and says, verse 15, Then the prophet Jeremiah said to Hananiah the prophet, Hear now, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent you, but you make this people trust in a lie. Therefore the Lord has said, Behold, I will cast you from the face of the earth. This year you shall die. Because you have taught rebellion against the Lord. Rebellion? I don't get that. What do you mean rebellion? You've told the people that God has put in a timeout that they could get out of that timeout. Mm. So Hananiah the prophet died the same year in the seventh month. He was a false prophet. And then we pick up the story again. In 29 verse 4. 
Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all who were carried away captive, whom I have caused, whom I have caused, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. Before I read the next part, I don't know students or, you know, who, who said if, if they're of the right age, right? You said that they're of the right age. Uh, if you've ever been in a timeout. Yeah? I, I don't understand what timeouts are. When I grew up, we didn't have timeouts. Okay, some of you are laughing because you know exactly what I'm talking about. When I, when I grew up, we did not have timeouts. But there was one time that I was put on a timeout. One time my father put me on a timeout. Other times he would have been like. <laughs> but this time he put me on a timeout. And when I think back to it, I think he didn't know what to do. <laughs> like he really did not know what to do. Um. My house was built on a hill, which meant that the road was higher than the level of where the house is. So when you're coming from the road to the house, you're going downhill. Then there's this place that they have made flat for the house to be, etc. But if you're standing at the place of the road, you're basically at the same level as the roof of the house. Now... I was a very mischievous boy. There was a fence that goes over there and then it comes down this way, but there's a, another section that connected from the house to the fence. So I would climb that section, walk along the fence, walk along the fence and climb on top of the house. And so, I had done it multiple times before when my dad was not there, so I would be able to get down before I get discovered. But this time, I was still standing on top of the roof when my father comes. So he's standing at the gate, and I'm standing at the house, and we're looking at each other face to face. I'm on top of the house. <laughs> and he watched me. Now, fathers, mothers... Think about this next part. He watched me as I walked along the roof, at the top of the roof. And as I go down onto this thin wall, and I walked back across the thin wall and come down. All along, I know I'm in trouble. I know that it's coming. I know it's coming. i just like, oh my goodness, today I'm going to get it. And then he goes like, you're in that room. He locked the room. He says, do not open for him. Do not give him anything. Put him in. A That's the only time I've ever been on a timeout. <laughs> and like I said, I think it's because my father didn't really know what to do with me at that time. He's just like, if I, if I beat this kid, I'm going to kill him. Or if I, whatever. It's just, it did not make sense. It didn't make sense at all. But he put me on a timeout. But, you know, when I get to the United States, uh, I realize that uh, people do timeouts for their children. <laughs> and so, you know, as a teacher, I cannot use the methods that I grew up with. So sometimes I have to give timeout to the children. And here's, here's, here's something else that I've learned. I cannot give them an out-of-school suspension because that's a vacation. They don't learn anything if you give them an out-of-school suspension. I, it, when I do a timeout, I need to bring you closer to me. So I have told my students, hey, you know what? If you keep acting like that, you're going to become my shadow. And so, of course, in their minds, that's a punishment. Because, I mean, I'm going to be with Mr. John the whole day. But it made me think about what God does to us. When we need a timeout, God doesn't send us out there so that we could be living it out there as part of our punishment. No, the punishment that God gives you, if, I don't know if you've ever paid attention to this, 
God will always bring you closer to himself as a form of punishment. But it's not really, when, I use, when I'm using the word punishment, I don't really mean that it's a bad thing. It's a form of redemption. When God brings you closer to himself, he's, go, he's hoping maybe, just maybe, some of this goodness is going to rub off of this one, and then, and then, and then they're going to stop climbing those roofs that they're not supposed to be climbing. So, the people of Judah had committed so much idolatry and they had done so many things over the years so God is like you know what I am tired of all of this I'm gonna put you on a timeout I'm gonna bring Nebuchadnezzar so he could come and take you away from your home take you away from this place that you have used and abused and then you're gonna go to Babylon so that you could learn something and God decreed that they're going to be there for 70 years. 70 years. So the fact that Hananiah was saying, you're going to be out in two, that's a rebellion against God's word. So the same way, you know, with, with my students, whenever I put them on a timeout, they're trying to find ways out of it. If I tell them, sit over here, they start getting up. No, no, you sit over there. Uh, they they, they, they want to finish their time earlier. They're not understanding that it's the time that builds the conscience and so that you could learn something. And if by the time that this time out ends, you have not learned anything, then you have wasted your time. So this is... Now we can read verse 5. While they're in captivity, this is what God tells them. Build houses and dwell in them. Plant gardens and eat their fruit. Take wives and beget sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands so that they may bear sons and daughters. That you may increase and not be diminished and seek the peace of the city to where I have caused you to be carried away captive and pray to the Lord for it for in its peace you will have peace this is the context in which we find ourselves later reading verse 11 and 12 and 13. Most of us have read verse 11, 12, and 13 without understanding the context. Before that, he has said, you know, I know that these people are lying to you. Uh, do not listen to the prophets, your diviners, because they're telling you lies. And then verse 10, for after how long? Verse 10, 70 years are completed in Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you and cause you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Most of the time we have used this, like I, I, I know that we have used this whenever somebody's sick. We have used this whenever somebody's going through a tough time. We have used this whenever somebody has lost a loved one. We have used this, this verse. We have used this verse, but we have used it out of context. Everything is going to be fine. Everything is going to be fine. Everything is going to be fine. Yes, I know that. But in the meantime, there is some 70 years for you to spend time with, with God on a timeout. And this timeout has a purpose. Now, I don't know what you're going through right now. I don't, know, I don't know where you're feeling stuck. I don't know uh, if you, you feel like, you know, you know sometimes when you're stuck in traffic and you, you wish you could go somewhere else. And like I said, there are times when the timeout that you have is through no fault of your own. But then there are times, you know, that when the GPS tells you there's a delay on this path, we're suggesting this other path. And it will give you accept or dismiss. And most of the times, what do we do? 
We tap dismiss. And then you miss the exit that would have given you another way out. And now you're going to be stuck in it. You're going to be in this traffic. You're going to be in this timeout. Now those are self-imposed timeouts. Some of them we have no control over. And other ones we had just pressed dismissed. Either way, God is using the time out for you to learn something. So I don't know what you're stuck with. You're stuck with the same, within the same job that you don't like. Or maybe you're stuck without a job. Okay? Are you stuck in, in this relationship that's going nowhere? Or are you stuck in your singleness? Are you stuck... In this house, maybe you have too much mortgage, not enough pocket. Or maybe you're stuck without a house. You're priced, I'm priced out of the market. You know, uh, me, I, I, you know, when, when, remember I told you I was a mischievous boy, right? But that was not just about climbing roofs. I spent so much money when I was in college that I should have saved. And so I got myself into deep debt. And then God had to put me on a timeout. I've been on this timeout for about 16 years. <laughs> yeah. But in that timeout, God had some lessons for me. I could have been stuck, still spending, still wasting, still whatever. But no, he was like, you need to get out of debt, John. So I worked towards that. And so at that time, at that time in 2008, 16 years, yeah, so almost 60 years, 2008, I had to move back into my parents' house because I was priced out of the market. And then I was like, okay, as soon as I get out of debt, I will buy a house. And then I get out of debt, and now the houses are not. People are bidding 50, 60, 70, 100 over asking. The market is at half a million dollars. And I'm like, half a million, that's $3,500 in mortgage. I don't have that much money. <laughs> so I'm stuck. Right? Are you stuck in the same rut? Or are you stuck in the same rat race? Stuck in the same patterns. Patterns of stress. Patterns of sin. Patterns of shame. Patterns of loss. Of confusion. Poor intentions and lack of action. Poor decisions. And even worse, executions. Are you stuck? Are you on a timeout? But I'm here to tell you that you can change your perspective. It may be tumbling this way, but you can look at it this way. Don't look at your time out as a punishment. Look at it as an invitation to spend time with God. An invitation to grow. An invitation to become a different person. To be in a different place. To be in a different space in your mind. To enjoy this moment and to grow from it. This, I, I love this verse in uh, Psalm 27. See, when you're stuck somewhere and you didn't have a choice in it, you want to get out of it, correct? But there's another, remember, tumbling forward versus tumbling backwards. There's a different way to look at it. You could look at it as if you're stuck or you could look at it as if you chose to dwell somewhere. 
Dwelling means you are not in a rush to get out. Dwelling means you have chosen to go through this. Dwelling is like when you go to a place that they have valet parking and uh, you just give them your keys and you don't know where they took your car. <laughs> You're not in a rush to leave, so you don't know where they took it. Sometimes they, probably, they might take it like the whole city over or something like that. But you're not in a rush to leave, so you just give them your keys and you're just going to be in there. You're going to be there for a while until such a time that you decide to leave. And then you're going to have to wait for them to bring back your means of escape. But David was not in a rush to escape. If you go to Psalm 27, he says, I'm surrounded by enemies. But he begins and says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp around me, against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this shall I be confident. One thing. I have desired of the Lord. That will I seek. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord. And this is the part, students and older people, to inquire in his temple. You're not just reading to pass the class. You are actually learning this stuff. Remember I told you Matthew is reteaching me calculus? When I took calculus in, co in college, I was just trying to pass the class. In fact, some of you, my, my sister and, uh, you know, uh, Vivine, they, you know the story of how I was just choosing the, 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 the teachers that are like the easy ones. <laughs> but no, now this time I'm learning calculus for me because I want to know this stuff. Because I've realized that if I want to understand how God thinks, I really need to become a better mathematician. If I want to understand the mind of God, I need to understand those functions which he used to write those spirals. The spirals that make you and me. I need to understand those things. So now I'm going in to inquire. But not just to inquire about the mathematics. I want to inquire about God. To inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. And as you inquire about God, you realize that he always has the best intentions for you. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. And as you're in this time out, this is what's going to happen. When you're in the time out, he said... Build houses and dwell in them. He didn't just say build houses and, you know, stay in them. He didn't say build houses and, you know, like spend some time in them. He says dwell in them. That means you, you, you actually sit down, you take off your boots or your shoes or whatever, you put them away, and then you just, you know, you put in your, your, your inside clothes. Um, some young folks here don't understand that. I'm, I'm going to explain this. Listen, when I was younger, when I was younger, any time could be any time to go out. 9, 9 p.m., somebody calls me, hey, you want to go? Sure, no problem. 10 p.m., somebody calls me, hey, you want to go? Sure, no problem. 11 p.m., no problem. Midnight, no problem. 2 o'clock, no problem. I'm there. Let me tell you something. I finish teaching. I get home. If I get home at 5 p.m., if I get home at 5 p.m. and I take off my outside clothes, it's a wrap. <laughs> Nobody's going to get me out of the house. I guarantee you if you want to have plans with me or something like that, you better put them in before I get to the house and change into my inside clothes. Because once I put in my inside clothes, I'm here to dwell. Yes. I am going to sit down. I am going to, I'm, I'm going to sit down. Sometimes I will be like, you know, now of course I can never touch my bed with my outside clothes ever. No, it has to come out. So if I sit in my bed, mm, 
It's, it's gone. It's done. I will sit there. I may watch something from my bed or my phone or something like that. I may try to do a little bit of work, which never happens really. I may, I may do whatever, but you can't call me and be like, can you come out? <laughs> Not happening. I am here to dwell. So, he said, build houses and dwell in them. Plant gardens and eat of their fruit. In other words, while you're in this time out, grow. Grow from it. Grow personally. That means gain some new skills. Yeah, I cannot buy a house at the moment, but trust me, I've been maxing out my retirement savings though. Okay? Okay? So that when, I, when, I, when, when finally I could afford the house, at least I won't be like, okay, do I pay the, 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 the no, you know? Uh, so I, 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 again, I cannot buy a house at the moment, but I'm not building up my credit card either. Zero. Zero. The, the credit card companies used to love me, but now they hate me. <laughs> I haven't paid interest in years. I have not paid interest in years. Right? Build some skills, some personal skills. Grow out of it. Get something out of it. Grow relationally. Make new connections. Listen, you never know how many people know other people that you're going to need later. So if you connect with this person and that person, and this person, typically most things happen, like, oh, you want to study what? Oh, I have my friend. They give them a call and they could, they so I heard somebody was praying for college. I'm a guidance counselor. Um, and part of that is you start developing relationships all over the place. And so if a student wants to do something, and I call somebody, hey, I have this student who wants to do something. Now, most of the times, and I, I was the same way too when I was younger, you know, like a teacher will tell you, call this person or do this thing or apply to that thing. And you go, oh, I don't have to do that. You're spending so much time hee-hawing and all stuff because I had this one student, to- this one student told me and I, I felt like slapping him. <laughs> I have to compose myself. I can't come to your tutoring session this afternoon because I have to work. And I, and I asked him, how much do they pay you? He say, uh, oh, $15. I'm like, oh, you know, see, when, when I was younger, that would have been a lot. But now, that's not even an Uber Eats uh, order. <laughs> right? Oh, by the way, don't even use those delivery services. They're overcharging you for no reason. Go to the place. <laughs> Go to the place. I told the boy, I'm giving you my time for free. When I charge somebody for tutoring, they pay at least $75 an hour. How much of your time would cost my time? You would have to work for five hours to pay for one of mine. Now I'm giving it to you for free. But the boy was not understanding it. Grow relationally. If a teacher says, I'm going to stay after school for you, you better take that opportunity. If somebody says, you know what, I'm going to call my friend for you, you better mm, you better pay attention to what they're saying. If somebody says, I could help you out, you better stick with it, and you better send a thank you note. I used to forget to do those things. I thought, you know, uh, I'm good. I said, no, no, you send a thank you note. Grow financially. In the meantime, grow mentally. If you need to get some counseling so that you could get over some things, do that. If you need to, to, to talk to someone and, and, you know, seek out forgiveness and all that, do that. But whatever you do, make sure that you grow spiritually. Get closer to God. Get closer to God and get ready for the next phase. Because guess what? When God is ready to uplift you, because he says 70 years, you're going to spend in this captivity, in this time out. 
But once I'm done with a timeout, I know the thoughts that I have for you. He's like, I've got a plan for your life. Thoughts of good and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. He says, I got a blueprint for your life, but right now I need you to get out of yourself. I need you to get over yourself. I need you to get from whatever it is that you think that you know. And guess what? Man, I used to think I knew stuff. I used to think I knew stuff. I used to think nobody could tell me anything. My dad couldn't tell me nothing. My mom couldn't tell me nothing. My teachers couldn't tell me nothing. I remember when I was working this summer job that a teacher arranged for me. Um, they were paying me $1,000, and that's a long time ago. That was a long time before you were born. $1,000 for the summer was a lot. Okay? Uh, and, and they were paying me $1,000 and all I got to do is go to the lab, work in the lab, uh, and then, you know, produce a report. But I was procrastinating on it, and then the, this lady who was my, my, my lab boss says, you need to do this, and she called my advisor to school and everything, and then you know, I was like, you know, I don't got time for this, and then I, I started like, well, you know, I don't need the job anyway. I left the spot. They had advanced me $300, but I left the 700 on the table. That was stupid. Don't be like me. Make sure that whatever you're doing right now is building you for the next phase. Because God says, I know the plans that I have for you. You need to grow personally. You need to grow relationally. You need to grow financially. You need to grow mentally. You need to grow spiritually. And when, when God sees that you have gotten over yourself, and when God sees that you have understood that he's ready to lead you somewhere, he's going to be like, all right, come on. Come on, let me show you this door. Open this door, and then open another door, and then open another door. And, and there's going to be some things that God is going to put you, some places where God is going to put you that you know for sure you do not deserve to be there. But God opened the door so that he could show somebody else what the glory of God looks like. All of this works for the glory of God. When he says, I know the plans that I have towards you, it's because he wants his name to be glorified. And if we would only stop trying to mess it up, if we would only just get over ourselves, if we would only stop trying to get out of the time too quickly, and then just be like, okay, God, I got you. You do whatever you want. I'm here with you. Let us pray. Father God, thank you so much for the plans, the thoughts that you think towards us. I thank you for the opportunity to just come and share this word, Lord. And I pray that you would be with our hearts, that it would find a fertile soil for it to grow. And Lord, in whatever places that your children may feel like they're stuck, help each one of us to grow from it. Help us to build houses and dwell in them, to plant gardens and eat of the fruit of it, to increase rather than to decrease. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. God bless you.
How many of you feel blessed today? Feel very blessed. Before Elder John gives our benediction, I just want to say a couple of things. One, first of all, thank God for Heather John. Thank you for your son today. And I also want to thank a wonderful group here, Lassa, for coming. I'm asking you to do two, two things. As you leave, to show our appreciation for what they've done, we're going to ask you to give a love offering. There will be ushers at the door, and as you leave, we hope that you would find in your heart to give a love offering to, towards this wonderful uh, presentation today. Amen? Amen? And finally, if you can, please join us for lunch. We have a wonderful lunch prepared, and we hope that each of you could stay. If not, we want to wish you a very happy Sabbath for the rest of the day, and God will bless you. Eternal Father, thank you so much for uh, the blessing of your word, the blessing of the talents of music, the blessing of all the talents that you have used here to give glory to yourself. Father, I pray that you would be with each individual here and those who are watching that uh, as we step away from this place, that we will continue to inquire in your temple on a daily basis, and that we'll get closer to you. Bless each individual, each family, and may your blessings not only be upon us, but they will carry over to those around us. In Jesus' name, amen.